The Daniel J. Morrell was a vessel built at the turn of the 19th century in 1906. The ship measured 603 feet in length, 58 feet in breadth, and had a depth of 27 feet. The ship was owned by Cambria Steamship Company, but it was operated by the Bethlehem Steel Company. In the year 1966, the Daniel J. Morrell marked 60 years of being on the Great Lakes, but it would be its last year. At the end of the 1966 season, the Daniel J. Morrell headed downbound for Buffalo, New York, on what the crew thought would be its final journey. But they received word that they would have to take another trip up to Taconite Harbor, Minnesota, to pick up another load of iron ore due to another vessel's breakdown. On its way up from Buffalo, it dropped anchor twice, once at Detroit and once on the St. Clair River, due to a November storm brewing. At 3 p.m. on November 28th, the Daniel J. Morrell had made it onto Lake Huron with its 580-foot sister ship, the Edward Y. Townsend, a little farther behind. By 8 p.m., Dennis Hale, the watchman for the Daniel J. Morrell, went off duty, and by 9.30 p.m., he was in bed trying to sleep. But the lake proved to be choppy, and the ship grinded and moaned through the storm, making it next to impossible to sleep. But eventually, he dozed off. At 10 p.m., the Morell sister ship, the Townsend, reported that winds had reached 50 miles per hour and the seas were about 12 feet high and building. At this point, the sea was crazed. Winds from the northeast and the northwest confused the sea and waves came from all directions. As the storm strengthened, Captain Connolly of the Townsend decided to turn his ship northeast to face the wind and the waves. Well, the morale stayed in a northwestern direction. Through the rest of the night and the early morning hours of November 29th, the ships continued to fight through the storm. At 11.50 p.m., Captain Crawley of the Morrell contacted Captain Connolly of the Townsend, but Captain Connolly said he was too busy to talk as he had problems to deal with on his ship because it was being blown around in the sea. At 12.15 a.m. on the following morning, Captain Connolly got a hold of Captain Crawley of the Morrell to respond to his call from earlier. Their call was brief, though. That call was to be the last one exchanged between the sister ships. A few minutes before 2 a.m., Dennis Hale, the watchman on the Daniel J. Morrell, awoke to a loud thump. After the first thump, another one occurred, and this time the lights went out. Just then, the general alarm was rung, and Dennis Hale made his way out of his room. As he arrived at the companionway, another crew member stared directly at Dennis Hale and shouted at him, Oh my god, get your jacket. He rushed back to his cabin to get to his life jacket. Dennis Hale made it to the deck just in time to see the stern section rip away from the bow. Power cables that were connected to the bow necessary in sending out an SOS or Mayday were snapped because of the first thud. So, the morale was not able to stand any distress signal. Dennis Hale made it to one of the ship's pontoon rafts with about a dozen other shipmates. But, then, the unthinkable happened. The stern, which was still powered by its engines, started facing the raft and ran into the bow section, which rammed them into the side. This caused most everyone in the raft to be thrown out into the sea to meet their demise. Only four crew members would make it back to the raft. Sojik, Fosbender, Cleary, and, of course, Hale. The four crew members watched as the stern section ran around crazy on Lake Huron and eventually disappeared. Cleary was the first to go, followed by Sojik, at daybreak on the next morning. Now, it was only Hale and Fosbender left. They were frozen stiff, and their only means of warmth were each other's body heat. By sundown, Fosbender had died, and Hale was the only one left on the raft. Dennis Hale went in and out of consciousness, but he made it through the night. Hale continued to weaken throughout the day, and ice started to form on his body. By 4 p.m., he heard a helicopter and had enough strength to raise his head and wave. 
Dennis Hale had been rescued, and he would spend Christmas with his family. But 28 other crew members were not so lucky. This storm that claimed the morel confirmed the theory that the Great Lakes are rougher than the ocean in any storm on the ocean. In the same storm that claimed the morel, the 730-foot and most beloved Edward L. Ryerson also fought through the same waves. The ship was relatively new, as it had been built six years prior to the Daniel J. Morrell sinking. The ship had been installed with strain gauges, which were new to the Great Lakes, and were being installed on a number of new Great Lakes freighters. In the storm, her gouges recorded a stress of about 23,000 pounds per square inch, which was much more than any ocean freighter had ever measured in any storm. Because of the Daniel J. Morrell sinking, many regulations and restrictions were made by the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard required shipping companies to make sure that their vessels were structurally sound and would not split apart as the Carl D. Bradley or the Daniel J. Morrell did in similar storms. Anyways, that concludes this video on the Daniel J. Morrell. Hope you liked it. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.